pestilence, famine, global conflict, and of course. <laughs> right, everyone, just a quick word before the festivities. First of all, of course, apologies for the change of venue. Unfortunately, the usual restaurant took some exception to last year's projectile vomiting from Mr. Hamburg <laughs> to Mr. McGill. Although I did attempt to explain that the event in question was not, at least initially, intended as competitive. <laughs> I would also like to say, on a personal note, a very big thank you to you all at the end of my first full term here. I appreciate I am a very different man from Mr. Nixon, and making the transition from one headmaster to the other is never easy. So with that in mind, it's only fair that I should let him thank you in his own inimitable way. Dear staff, I appreciate that Mr. Kennedy is a very different man from myself, and that making the transition from one headmaster to another is never easy. So with that in mind, it's only fair that I let him thank you in his own inimitable way. <laughs> And finally, Mrs. Slatt, I recognize your handwriting on my notes, and I'm certainly looking forward to whatever exotic apparel you're intending to wear this evening. Please remind everyone, hot fancy dress. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be raising everyone's temperature this evening, Mrs. Slatt. <laughs> Not very fancy dress. Carry on, everyone. See, everyone, I told you, he's alive! <laughs> Am I being naive? Is there something I don't understand? I mean, what is this big problem about inviting your partner to the staff party? <laughs> of course I want you to come. It's just it's going to be really, really, really boring. It's just going to be so awful and dull. Hi, Susie. It's going to be a great party. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, Paula, I just don't want you to be bored and really miserable and unhappy and have a really terrible time. Actually, I'm skipping it. What, you're not coming? No, no, I'm having a drink with Jenny from Modern Languages. Jenny's not coming either? Uh, no. <laughs> Angela from Business Studies? Oh, she left already. <laughs> what the hell? Come. <laughs> So who's Paula? Well, I'm sure I mentioned Paul. Night, Dan. Night, Susie. Well, I'm sure I've mentioned Susie. <laughs> Jason, um, I, I didn't think you were staying for the party. Well, I wasn't, but you know, changed my mind. Actually, I'm thinking of changing my mind too. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, how bad can it be? You're staying now? Yeah. Well, probably. Probably. Probably? So, Jason, are you, are you staying or, or what? Well, does it matter? Uh, sorry, darling, I'm just trying to sort out the absolute dullness level so that I can give you a proper assessment. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. Oh, exactly. Uh, why not, eh? Don't come. I'm only thinking of you. <laughs> right, everyone. Have a good time at the party tonight. Uh, sorry I won't be able to join you. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh! <laughs> I, I didn't realise you were, um... What? Staying. I, I, I didn't realise you, you were staying. I'm not. No, me neither. Oh, guys, make up your minds. I'm trying to find my girlfriend. Eric, we're staying. Uh, no, we're not, dear. Uh, yes, we are, dear. No, we're not, dear. <laughs> yes, we are, dear. <laughs> However hard you try, it is not actually possible to leave a party. This results in a very sad phenomenon. Jason, I'm just cancelling a cab that my husband insisted on ordering. Mrs. Slatt, how do you feel about your husband? Sorry? <laughs> how do you really feel about your husband? Uh, well, well, I... 
because there's something you ought to know, something important. I love you. Pardon? I love you, Mrs. Slat. Hello, Starway minicabs? Good God! <laughs> well, have you nothing to say? Well... <laughs> this is very sweet of you, dear. It's not sweet. It's passionate. It's dangerous, and you are not safe alone with me. Oh, I think I am, dear. You certainly are not, Mrs. Slat. Well, fairly safe, Jason. Mrs. Slat, I'm a religious education teacher, not a eunuch. There's a difference. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought you were about to explain it. Mrs. Slat, let me assure you, you are not safe. No, dear. Anything could happen. Well, of course it could. Don't scream. I think you're being a tiny bit optimistic there, Jason. <laughs> Jason, I don't know what anyone's told you about this, but... I'm afraid you're still a virgin. For God's sake, feel something. Well, thanks for the offer, but I'd rather just stand. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I just meant... Look, I'm really not very experienced at this sort of thing. Jason, I think it's about time you moved your hands. Oh, what, you mean sort of jiggle them a bit? <laughs> no, Jason, I mean move your hands away. Oh, right, of course, yes. Oh, God. What? I can't. I can't move them. They've locked. Jason. This isn't going well, is it? Jason. Whatever you may think of my husband, I can assure you there's one area where he's never let me down. Where I'm concerned, Jason, Eric is the most jealous and fiercely protective man I've ever known. Janet, let go of Mr. Cockfuster. <laughs> Check on that cat. Have you seen the time? <laughs> Mr. Slat, please understand that I'm terribly, terribly sorry. What? Well, you know, your wife's breasts. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Cockfoster, but there's a lot more to a relationship. Harry! Starway minicabs? Dear God. <laughs> Have you nothing to say? About what, dear? About Mr. Cockfoster fondling me. Oh, uh, well, um... Don't you care, Mr. Slat? Don't you care at all? Well, it was only Mr. Cockfoster, dear. For <laughs> God's sake, he's a religious education teacher, not a eunuch. There's a difference. <laughs> you want to jump in on that? <laughs> you know, these things happen. Let's all be reasonable. Reasonable? Eric, he was standing there and, without my permission, fondling my breasts. What are you trying to tell me, that there are faults on both sides? Well, I suppose, but they're pretty symmetrical. <laughs> Eric! Yes, dear? Go away. Oh, all right, dear, if that's what you want. Now, you are remembering. Mrs. Slatter, I apologize for having placed you in this most difficult situation. Jason. Oh, you really think you're up to it? I'm sorry? You think you can deal with a woman like me? Um. I warn you, I'm a handful, Mr. Cockfoster. Well, very nearly. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean... So, this, um, not a eunuch thing? Yes. Tell me about it. I'm just going to call a cab. Dan's still hogging the phone in the staff room. Well, uh, Miss Travis, perhaps you'd better use my office. Sure, fine. Hello, Starway minicabs. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Dan, look at this. Surprise. <laughs> this is the find of the decade. How did you know I was out here? Dan, every time I leave the room at a party, you invariably follow me in a pathetic attempt to get my attention. <laughs> so you've noticed? 
of all the videotapes in the world, imagine the one you would most like to see. Like maybe the one you wouldn't normally be allowed to see, but the one you would give anything to hold in your hand. Lesbian Spank Inferno. <laughs> Life by Eric Slad. There is no way we should be looking at this tape. Mm, it, it would be wrong. It would be unforgivable. No, it would be appalling. How wrong, unforgivable and appalling? But here. Oh, poor. <laughs> Do you know, I once had a strange dream about Elvis. Really, Miss Triplett? He was inflating a balloon. And he just got bigger and bigger and bigger. How extraordinary. Bigger and bigger. And the strangest thing of all, Mr. Kennedy, I was the balloon. Really? Bigger and bigger until I just couldn't bear it. And then I burst. Yeah, me. How distressing. Oh, no, no. It was all right. <laughs> Until Mother turned up with a machine gun. But that's dreams for you. Yeah, yes. You know, I was rather hoping I'd be home for news night. And the very next night, I dreamt about the Osmonds, and they were all on tour, and I was a train tunnel. And Mother was in a helicopter with Nepal. <laughs> Where are you going with that? Your wife wanted a drink. And, um, what are you doing with my wife? Just talking about sex. I mean religion. <laughs> sex in religion. Forgetting. I mean, God invented sex, didn't he? That's why he so often mentioned during it. <laughs> Kid, my, my parents slept in the next room. I used to think they got very excited when they were praying. <laughs> what got me interested in prayer in the first place? Bit of a wrong turning there. Never mind. Anyway, we were just uh, talking about Buddha. Hello, Starway minicabs. Buddha? <laughs> Cliff Richard was a nuclear physicist. <laughs> Was the atom? <laughs> so, Mr. Kennedy, what could these dreams be about? Sex. <laughs> so, what now? <laughs> now, let's be honest. Sex is not a pretty word. Now. I've already spoken to you about the staff party, which will be inflicted on me later this evening. And parties are obviously something which will be coming up in your future. And sex is something which tends to occur at such parties. He's not talking to you, Dan. <laughs> Actually, who is he talking to? It may well have occurred to you by now, or not, who knows, that your mother and I have uh, had, uh, as it were, sex. They don't have kids, do One they? day, oh. obviously, you'll wonder about where you came from. And so I'm preparing this answer for you now, just, you know, in case. He's pregnant. Yeah, but he's firing blank, so that's the rumor. Though, obviously, you will not be allowed to watch this tape until you are a certain age. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's talking to his unborn child. We should not be watching this. Absolutely not. The facts <laughs> are these. And lo and behold, it turned out that the endoscope was Mr. Spock. Hello, Starway minicabs. Mr. Spock! <laughs> Who is this? Well, what can it all mean, Mr. Kennedy? I... <laughs> Don't suppose I'll make it home for news night anyway.